All right. So now I'm going to show you the last two pieces of software that come in the box with Studio One. Uh, sorry, with the Studio Live Mixer. So I'm jumping ahead. So Studio One Artist. Uh, basically, Studio One Artist is also a recording application, but it really is more uh, when you've recorded something in Capture and you want to actually take that and enhance it and edit it. That's where Studio One Artist comes in. Now, of course, you can also record directly into Studio One Artist if you want. Um, and there are templates there for each Studio Live mixer as well. Um, there's just a lot more to kind of look at. And so a lot of live guys really like Capture to record in just because there's not a whole lot to look at. You just hit record and you, you're recording. But after I've got that recording and I want to kind of enhance it, that's what, where Studio One Artist comes in. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of you know, some of the, the, the key points of the software. So when you look at the, the opening screen, um, in Studio One Artist, you see basically this is called the start page, and this is showing me all of the things that really are important. Uh, here's all of the recent songs that I've been working on. Um, here is demos and tutorials. Uh, so, you know, basically I can actually go in and practice on somebody else's songs. So, you know, this is a really great tool right here. Here's all of the uh, audio device setup you know, for my particular audio device. And then, you know, when I want to, to open up a capture session, the, the beautiful thing about this is, is I don't actually have to, um, you know, go and transfer files out of capture to get into Studio One Artist. All I do is I just go to open an, an exi existing document and, you know, let's see, I put it right there on my desktop and here's open hands and hit open and bam, there it is. So that's what we just listen to. Now, um, this is called the arrangement page of um, the, the Studio One Artist software. And as, as you see on the bottom right-hand corner, uh, essentially there's three different buttons right here. So you have an edit mode, a mix mode, and a browser view. So the browser is this thing right here on the right-hand side. And this is essentially where all of my instruments, effects, sounds, files, all of that stuff lives. But the, brow the browser is kind of like Grand Central Station. This is where I can take stuff from the browser and apply it to my um, you know, production. And it's a, it's a really, really easy workflow. So let me just go, go ahead and, and pu pull up these songs. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to kind of start working with these tracks. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my mixer. And I'm going to return the master mix to channels 23 and 24 right here. And uh, let me go ahead and just turn off all of the EQ and compressors on that particular channel. Okay, so here is kind of where we're at right now with just everything flat. Okay, so, you know, essentially, if I wanted to add, let's say, you know, a compressor to the kick drum, well, you know, here's the kick drum down here in the mixer is channel one. And, of course, any of these can be color-coded. Of course, I can name things very easily, call it kick. You know, if I wanted to take all of the drums, which are basically on the first six channels, and change the color of them. I can just kind of shift select all the all all the way over, and kind of change the color to whatever I want. So you know any of those, and I can also kind of group these together as well. So like this, change the color. So n now I can kind of see my drums a little bit easier. And if I want to add a plugin, I just hit the effects right here in the browser. And you can see here's all the different effects that I have. So if I want to put a compressor on the kick, it's literally as easy as finding a compressor. So in my Dynamics folder, here's the compressor. And I just click, drag, and drop it straight onto the kick. So there's my compressor. So you know, now I can hear it with the compressor. OK. Now, you know, similarly, um, just like, you know, the, the same way that you saw with Virtual Studio Live, uh, you know, we, we've shared a lot of this technology with, um, 
with with Studio One, uh, Studio One and Studio Live. So you know, a, a lot of the, the 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 people, the the things that people like, the workflow things in Studio One, we put it in the Studio Live, Virtual Studio Live, and and similarly the same thing. So just like you saw the drag and drop happening. Um, with Virtual Studio Live, we can do the same thing here. The other thing that's kind of cool is you have these effects chains right here. So I can like take a whole chain of effects. So let's say I want a kick drum chain, and you know here's one you know called bass drum, okay? And if I click and drag that straight to the bass drum, or I can drag it straight to the mixer here, no problem. Now you can see that's a gate compressor and EQ all in one chain. So now we can listen to that. Now here's before, and here's after. Now, from here, I can double click on any one of these, and look, here's little tabs that go through all three of the plugins. So you can create your own custom chains as well. So you know, you may have certain settings that you like for certain things, and you can create your own presets, just like you can in Virtual Studio Live, so you can kind of come back to them. Uh, after the fact. So that's how you drag and drop effects. In the same way of dragging effects in and out, I can also um, drag in other things like sound effects or samples. In fact, right here, if you click the sounds tab, you'll see all kinds of different uh, loops and, you know, here's some different beats here. So, you know, if, if I wanted that in my song or if I was, you know, creating a new, you know, uh, kind of a thing, I could, like, literally just put in an audio file, stereo audio file right here, and I could just drag it straight in, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of creative tools that are available uh, within Studio One Artist, just the basic software, to, to really help you uh, kind of craft your, your, your song. Uh, in the same way, you know, I could, I could have... Uh, virtual instruments. What's a virtual instrument? It's actually uh, basically uh, a, a MIDI controllable um, sound. So I could have a MIDI controller hooked up to my computer and be able to play keyboard sounds. So let's say we don't have a string section uh, on Sunday morning and I'd like to be able to, you know, make a recording of some, some strings and be able to play along. Well, I can actually create a song in Studio One Artist to a click track and then I can route the click track through the studio live, through one of the channels using the Firewire returns, and now we can play along with loops, play along with sounds. So it's a very, very cool and creative um, way of, of, of implementing other tools, uh, you know, to your, to, your, to your Sunday morning, to your um, worship services. Okay, so once I kind of get, and this is just, you know, I've, I'm, I'm giving you just such a quick view of kind of what you can do. You know, if, if there's a bad snare hit, for example, um, you know, when he was playing, let's just, uh, let's listen real quick and see. Let me, uh, let me kind of solo the drums real quick. Oh, here's another thing that we can do. Like, let's say all of these are drums right here. And if I shift click against all of them, and then if I right click, I can choose this add bus for selected tracks. What it does is, is it creates a drum bus, just like on the mixer, like you have subgroups, this is a drum subgroup. So now I can solo all of the drums like that. Well, you know what? He's a pretty dang good drummer, so I was waiting for him to, like, have a bad snare hit, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen today. So let's just pretend that this particular snare was a bad snare hit. Now, when I double-click on anything in Studio One, what happens is it opens up an editor. So right here uh, below, the edit comes on uh, wherever I click. So, you know, if I want to click on a floor tom, here's the floor tom. Here's a snare. Okay, so let's say, you know, this is the snare hit I want to kind of work on. Uh, let's just say that snare hit was bad, okay? So what I can do is, rather than, you know, mess with my, my, my arrangement up above, I can actually zoom really in right here. And then using my tools, you see above here, you've got the range tool, the cut tool. Let's say that this, this, this hit was bad. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to make a little cut here. I'm going to make a little cut here, okay? And then I'm going to hit delete, and let's, let's just say I, I wanted to delete that out. And I wanted to take this one and move it over there. Well, I can hit number two, or I can go over here to my range tool and just kind of copy this little hit right here, okay? And hit Command-C for copy, and then put it put my cursor right where I want to paste it. And then basically, just like Microsoft Word, whatever the, uh, the, the quick key command for copy is always Control-C, and for paste is what? Control-V. So hit Control-V, bam, there's my snare hit. Now let's listen to it. Okay, so, you know, this works a lot better if you have a, a drummer that can't hit a snare drum very consistently, but uh, we've got a good drummer, so we don't have that problem. So that's, an, uh, you know, an idea. Let's just say that this hit was way, way louder than the other ones. Well, I, you know, right here on the waveform, I've got a little handle, and I can actually just, you know, size the volume on any particular event. So the editing is really powerful in Studio One. It's very, very simple to use. And, you know, it allows you to take, um, you know, your, your recording and kind of fully produce it. So, you know, there's all kinds of plugins. There's call, uh, all kinds of editing tools. In fact, Personas has, I would probably venture to say, over 100, uh, over 100 hours of tutorial videos on our YouTube channel, and also if you go to personas.com on Studio One specifically. So, you know, and everything that I'm showing you right now is with the free included version. So now I'm going to kind of um, fast forward a little bit. Let's just pr pretend that I've kind of mixed this song. So we cheated a little bit in the fact that Justin mixed this song last night. Uh, because, you know, to do a proper mix, I wouldn't actually do it here in the church listening through a PA. I would want to take the, the files home and, you know, s you know, either use some studio monitors or some really good headphones, uh, you know, to do the mix and to, so I can really hear every single little thing and edit it exactly like I want. Um, so let me just show you kind of what, what we ended up with. Um, so here is where this song started. This is with no effects. Okay, so just listen to this. It's really low, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Let's see. This is on 21, 22. Woo! That's too loud. Sorry. Okay, so let me turn this down a little bit. Okay, now that, that's completely flat, that's completely mono, that's no effects, that's just the tracks as they came off of the mixer. It sounds pretty bad. You actually have to go in and work on it a little bit, you know? So you would never actually have a mix like that, push all the faders up to unity and expect it to sound good. Okay, so here's what this sounds like, just completely flat. Okay, so now here's Justin's mix with some effects a little trickery, and uh, now let's hear what it sounds like. So you hear a little delay, you hear some reverb. All of these effects are coming from Studio One Artist. We didn't use any kind of third-party plugins. Everything you hear is what you get in the box with the Studio Live Mixer. So that's a quick example of what you can do. <laughs>